Hello, and welcome to this module on publishing your academic monograph. Throughout the module, we'll look at the whole process from conceiving your monograph through proposing it and getting it published. I have included lots of sources from people who've gone through the process themselves and published their own monographs. For today, though, let's start with a situation that a lot of you might find yourselves in, and that's perhaps you're coming to the end of your PhD or you have finished and your thesis is ready and you're starting to think about whether that would work well as a monograph in itself. So let's think in this video about the process of turning your thesis into a monograph. Now, the first thing to ask yourself is, is this the right process for me? As we'll see, it takes quite a lot of work. So think about why you're doing it. First of all, do you have the time and resources to do so? Um, do you need it to progress your career or to establish yourself as an expert voice in your field? Or do you want to help people access the information more easily? Or actually, would it be enough just to share your thesis? So have a think. There are substantial differences between a thesis and a monograph. It isn't just a case of sending it to a publisher and getting it done. A thesis is really there to help you think through your PhD and to develop your arguments and also to demonstrate at the end that you have understood and processed the information. So you will have included a very thorough review of the field because you're trying to demonstrate that you have accessed the sources that are important and understood them. And you will have designed it to demonstrate your mastery of a topic, of quite a narrow topic at that. A monograph, on the other hand, needs to appeal to a much broader audience than perhaps just two or three examiners. So it needs to engage the readers with a strong narrative argument. It needs to connect to the wider field and have a broad appeal. So the scope needs to be extended and broader. It also doesn't need to include a lot of review chapters because readers probably already know the literature or can discover it for themselves. Your job is to discuss that particular topic. You can think of it this way. There will be a lot of overlap between the thesis and the monograph, but there will also be things in the thesis that don't need to be in the final product, for instance, review chapters. Equally, there will be things in the monograph that weren't in the thesis. You might find yourselves adding whole chapters that situate the, the, the research more broadly. You might find yourself restructuring the whole book, um, perhaps combining chapters or splitting them up and you will most likely rewrite the introduction and the conclusion too. So people find this process can take time. Two years is probably quite a common thing to aim for. So if this is something you want to embark on, you should probably be thinking uh, as soon as is convenient for you, probably after your examination, about setting aside time to read and edit and write every week into your schedule in a way that works for you. There are some very useful resources on how to navigate that process. One is this book by William Germano, and the other are the blogs by Kathleen Knox, which also include one on how she turned her dissertation into a book, and that led to a very successful academic career. So I'll include the links to that in the uh, page under the video. One other thing I want to mention before we move on is that to graduate at the University of Cambridge, you will need to deposit your thesis in Apollo. That's our institutional repository, and it's essentially a digital extension of the library. So as well as your physical copy, you'll need to deposit a digital copy of the thesis. That means you will have a permanent link and DOI to it so that you can share it. It will also help you to measure the impact you're having because you'll be able to see statistics for the number of views and downloads over time and where in the world those are happening from. And you'll have choices when it comes to the access you want to give people for your thesis. So here are your options. Um, a lot of students, about 45% at this stage, have already made their thesis open access. That means that anyone in the world with an internet connection can download it straight away from Apollo. Um, that's, as you can imagine, really great in terms of getting people to read it and share it. And it can help you demonstrate that your thesis is of interest and therefore make a case for why it should become a monograph. Another maybe 45% of students have embargoed their thesis. That means they've suggested a date, a certain point in the next few years, when that thesis will be open access, but it isn't open access yet. 
that's often chosen when um, they're negotiating publishing contracts or perhaps they have journal articles that they still wish to release and they don't want to prejudice those options. Um, a few students have to choose the controlled access option. That means the thesis will not become open access, although people will be able to request a copy from the library by paying a fee. Um, that could be done, for example, if your thesis contains a lot of third-party copyright material that you can't clear the use for and you can't redact, um, then it might be a good option to control the access. In a very few number of cases, you might restrict the access altogether. That means the thesis can't even be requested under any circumstances. But that's really only for very special cases where there's a lot of dangerous or sensitive information in the thesis. So what I'd say if you are thinking of a monograph is as soon as you can, get into conversations with editors about what would work for them. A lot of editors don't have a problem with open access, but then again, some do. So check with them whether they'd be happy for your thesis to be open access. Also bear in mind that if you change your mind and your thesis was open access, but now you want to embargo it or control the access, then you can always get in touch with the Office of Scholarly Communication at any time and we will make those changes for you. So you're not set into one of the options. So think carefully about what you need to do to end your thesis and then whether you think it would work well as a monograph. Now, if it does, um, then carry on with the rest of the module. You'll find out lots more about uh, writing your proposal and getting your thesis published. And I hope you can join us again next week for the next module.